everyone. This is Nurse Mo, and welcome back to the Straight A Nursing Podcast. This is episode 54, and today we will be talking about all the clinical rotations that you're likely to encounter in nursing school. Before we jump in, I want to say Happy New Year, and I hope you had a great holiday. You may have noticed we took a little bit of a break over the end of Well, basically all of December because I had finals and projects and then it was the holidays and I was really busy and we were doing a lot of sales with the planner and constantly packaging up shipments to go out and things just got absolutely overwhelming over here. So we put the podcast on a little brief pause, figured you guys were busy as well, but we're back at it here in the new year in January of 2019. So some of you are getting ready to start nursing school and you're probably wondering what clinicals are going to be like. First of all, when you think about clinicals, you most likely are thinking of your inpatient clinical rotations where you're taking care of patients in the acute care setting. And while that is definitely probably the biggest focus of your clinical experiences, you will have so many varied and interesting clinicals. I wanted to talk a little bit about each of them here so that you kind of have an idea of what to expect, what's coming, and maybe a little more knowledge about what's expected of you during this time. Now, of course, this is indicative of my experience. Not every school operates the same. Not every school has the same clinical hours requirements, but this will give you an idea of what I experienced. So the first one I want to talk with you about are your med surge clinicals. And when people say the term med surge, for those of you who are just starting out, what they're referring to is medical surgical. This is the general population of patients that are in the hospital. They're there for a medical or a surgical reason. So a lot of your clinical rotations will be called med surge rotations. So this is that main one that you think of when you think of nursing school. This is where you'll go and you'll learn the basics and get some practice in taking care of actual patients. So when I was in school, my med surge one clinical, and you'll have two, you'll have med surge one and med surge two, sometimes called advanced med surge instead of med surge two. So my first one, my first med surge class, my clinical rotation for that was on a general med surge unit. But some of my classmates were in oncology. Some of them were on an ortho floor. Note that yours could certainly be on a more specialized unit like that. But for many people, it's going to be a basic med surge floor. And I have to say, I was terrified of my med surge clinicals. I had never taken care of patients before. I wasn't a CNA or even a volunteer at a hospital. I went into this profession from a completely unrelated background. So actually going into the hospital, being in that very unfamiliar environment, doing things that were entirely brand new to me was a incredibly, incredibly stressful. And it might be feeling that way for you as well. So in your first semester med search clinical rotation, your main objectives, okay, you guys aren't saving lives here. You know, you're not solving the world's problems. (laughs) You don't have to put all this pressure on yourself. Your main objectives are going to be to be safe. Very first and foremost, you want to provide safe nursing care And this always includes keeping your patients safe as well. So as you go about your day on the med surge unit as a first semester student, if you're always thinking about safety, you're going to do well. And I'm talking about giving medications safely, responding appropriately to changes in patient condition, things like that. So you definitely want to provide safe nursing care. You're also going to learn how to do what we call a head-to-toe or a physical assessment. 
You will also be practicing a lot of those hands-on skills, those things that you think of when you think of what nurses do, right? Like putting in nasogastric tubes or inserting urinary catheters, all those hands-on type skills, you'll definitely want to practice as much as you're able to. You will learn how to give medications. Giving medications safely is probably the highest, what do I want to say? Probably the most singularly important thing that you can learn in med surge clinicals. Many schools will immediately fail you if you do not give medication safely. If you make a medication error in nursing school, you most likely will be kicked out of the program. So they take this very, very seriously. So you'll learn in your skills lab what you need to do to give medication safely. You know, this is some some schools call it the five rights and some there's six or seven. And this is basically, you know, is it the right patient? Is it the right med? Is it the right time? Is it the right dose? Is it the right indication? All of those things. You want to make sure you're following all of those, quote, rights as you give your medications in a safe manner. You'll also learn how to check blood sugars, possibly give insulin, change wound dressings, measure wounds, do wound assessments, mobilize patients, so getting patients out of bed, helping them get to the commode, doing all of those things. And you want to learn how to do it properly so that you don't hurt your back because you have a long career ahead of you. You will also learn how to assist patients with their ADLs. ADL stands for Activities of Daily Living. This includes toileting, so get used to it now. You'll also get practice with charting, time management, and prioritizing. So remember, I was really nervous and one of those hyper-motivated nursing students, that's going to be the nice way to say that I was a little bit obsessive about my nursing school performance, but I totally get it that you're feeling a bit neurotic about everything. And I use the term neurotic very loosely here just to say that as a first semester nursing student, it's going to be really easy and probably your natural inclination to stress about every little thing. But your professors are basically looking for your ability to be safe. They want to see that you're accurate and they want to see that you're thorough. So can you give meds following all of those, all of those rules that you learned in class? Do you know when to get help? So if your patient is having trouble, have you learned things in class that help you recognize when a patient could be in distress or when you have an assessment finding that is concerning? Do you know when to get help? Can you perform a head-to-toe assessment? Do you understand the pathophysiology of your patient's disease process? Have you been able to outline a plan of care that is specific for each patient? Can you set goals for your patients? Are you able to manage your time? Are you able to chart accurately? And do you embrace opportunities to practice your skills? So if you're doing all of those things, then the answer is going to be yes. Okay, you're doing fine. Take a deep breath in. Okay, so that was MedSurge 1. In MedSurge 2 or your advanced MedSurge class, Things will get a little bit more hands-on, and during this time, you may also do some rotations in the critical care setting and also possibly the emergency room. So I did my MedSurge to critical care rotation in a neuro-intensive care unit. I think it was just two days, but maybe it was just one. I think it was two, though. I don't really remember. But I really knew at that point that critical care was absolutely what I wanted to do. So one of the patients that I helped take care of had 
Actually, now that I think about it, there were two days that I was there, two different patients. One was a patient that had a brand new skin graft, and this was in like a trauma situation. And we had to check hourly to make sure that the skin skin graft was getting blood flow. So for a student that was really stressful, I was using a Doppler for the very first time and it was really hard to find where the blood flow was audible with the little Doppler tool. And at one point we had to call the surgical residents to come over and assess it because we, me and my nurse I was working with, were not sure that we were able to confirm patent blood flow to this brand new skin graft. The other patient that I had for that rotation was, I don't remember anything about why she was in the hospital, but she was, she had a tracheostomy. I do remember that and was on a ventilator. Um, We also got to do a day in the emergency room, which I thought was just fantastic. What I remember the most about that experience was the nurse I was working with was so outwardly obvious in her desire to want absolutely nothing to do with me or any other student. So I basically just um, tried to stay out of her way as much as I could. I helped as much as I could. I placed a Foley catheter, took vitals, emptied urinals, grabbed supplies if I knew where I could find them. Um, And then when critical patients came in, I just watched and absorbed and learned as much as I could just from being in that environment. And it was absolutely fantastic. And in addition to learning about a little bit about emergency nursing, I learned how not to treat students. And and I had several experiences of people that treated us like second class citizens. This one really stood out to me and I just vowed never ever to be that nurse. And so far I have not been. Um, Also for MedSearch 2, most of my hours were spent on a telemetry floor. Now, telemetry is kind of in between critical care and MedSearch floor. Telemetry simply means that the patient is on what they call telemetry monitoring. They're on constant cardiac heart monitoring. So these are your patients who have cardiac issues. Maybe they've had a cardiac surgery or they just need a little bit more careful monitoring. So in that regard, it's kind of in between ICU and what we call the floor. So during this rotation, your professors are really going to start looking for you to get your time management a lot more solidified. They want to see that you're really getting into the workflow of taking care of multiple patients. You're going to continue to refine and improve upon your assessment skills. You're going to be giving meds and practicing those skills, possibly adding in IV piggyback medications, possibly Um, I would say definitely going to be hanging those up with supervision. Some schools, they don't let students touch anything IV related. So it just depends on what your school and the local hospital you're working with um, require as far as the parameters on that. I really liked this clinical rotation. I felt like I had a lot more autonomy than in first semester. In first semester, we had to meet with our clinical professor at like 6.15 in the morning before we even went up to the floor. We had to show her that we had done our care plans, that we had looked up all of our meds, that we had created a little schedule for our day, when we were going to do our meds, when we were going to do our assessments. And then in second semester, we didn't have that morning meeting with our professor. We would just go up to the floors start our day, and then my clinical professor would come around and check on us as needed or if we were doing a new procedure or skill that she needed to check us off on or observe us doing. So I just felt like I had a little bit more autonomy in that rotation, which I really liked. And I do remember an occasion, and if you read the blog post version of this, it says, when I record the podcast, remind me to tell you a story. So when I was on that rotation, this was another moment when I was like, I've got to do critical care because it was so cool. So I was taking care of a patient who had, don't remember what the issue was, like why the patient was even there in the first place, but they had had a CT scan done that day. And one of the deals with the dye in a CT scan is that it can muck up your kidneys. And 
cause you to go into what's called acute renal failure. That doesn't mean your kidneys are dead and are going to be dead forever, but it means they're definitely not working properly for that time. And a lot of times the kidneys recover and the patients are fine. But in the acute moment, that can cause a lot of problems. So I was assessing this patient and took her pulse oximetry reading. And I don't know if I had assessed her already and I was just coming back for a second. I think this was more like later in the day. So I had probably been working with her all day. And then when I came back in for like a midday assessment, I check her pulse oximetry and it's a little bit low and she's telling me she's feeling short of breath. And I grab my nurse that I'm working with and we put her on some oxygen and her sats just aren't coming up. They're just, you know, they might come up a little bit, but then they go back down again and she's getting more and more labored with her breathing. And we ended up having to call a rapid response, which means there's a team of nurses, the rapid response nurses who come to the bedside when patients are kind of showing signs of deteriorating and they either intervene so that the patient does not have to transfer to a higher level of care or they do the interventions that the patient needs at that time to keep them safe and then they facilitate the transfer to uh, an intensive care unit. So we had to call a rapid response. We There were so many people in the room. It was crazy crazy. There were at least like six nurses in the room for this poor woman who was definitely having a hard time breathing. I think they eventually put her on BiPAP before we even left the room to take her to ICU. We were running cardiac enzymes, uh, chemistries, all these things, giving her pain medicine for some reason. I don't really remember. Maybe she was having some chest pain as well. Must have been because I remember we sent cardiac enzymes. We were very concerned about her heart. She must have had, maybe she had some, what looking back now that I know more about pathophysiology and what happens with people who have heart failure, I'm guessing she had some degree of heart failure and that's why she was on the telemetry unit. And I think she had come in maybe for who knows what, it doesn't even matter, but she'd had that CT scan. So now her kidneys aren't working so well and not flushing out her fluids as they should. Well, when you have heart failure, you get fluid overload very easily, throw in the kidney dysfunction. Now we've got fluid overload even more. And we end up what's called with a flash pulmonary edema or a a quick onset, sudden onset pulmonary edema with fluid in the lungs. Pretty much that's what happened to this poor lady. We took her over to ICU and it was so nice. They let me like walk over with them for the transfer. And I remember I walked into the cardiac ICU with the nurse I was working with that day and this patient and the cardiac ICU nurse was just so calm about everything and just seemed like she felt like she could handle whatever situation occurred. And I thought, I want to feel like that. And I don't know if I feel like that, but I definitely, if I got a patient that came to me with that situation, I would feel like, okay, I know what to do because I've seen it now as an ICU nurse so many times. So one of the things I want you to just take away from this story is not that any type of nursing is better than any other at all. What I want you to get from the story is that the teamwork, those telemetry nurses were such a great team. They came together with the rapid response nurses to do everything that was absolutely in the best interest for this patient. They worked beautifully as a team. And I would have to say, it does not matter where you work. If you have a good team, the teamwork between you and the other nurses is absolutely one of the very best things that you will love about your job. So What else did I do in that semester? Somewhere in those first two semesters, actually, I remember going to a bunch of different places and I don't remember exactly what semesters it was. I did spend one day in the PACU, the recovery unit, after surgery. I got to go to surgery and spend a morning there. I think I only got to watch one surgery. It was maybe like an hour surgery. It was a hernia repair. Pretty routine surgery, but it was still really, really cool. 
And I'm trying to think if there was anything else in those first two semesters that related to the hospital. I can't really remember. I'll probably come across some more later as I get through this list. Okay, so then you also will have mental health clinicals. So mental health, I believe that was in our second semester. It might have been our third semester. I really don't remember. Mental health clinical, we had two components to this. We had inpatient mental health and outpatient mental health. So for inpatient mental health clinicals, my group spent time at a psych facility and this was just, it just showed how vastly different mental health nursing is in the inpatient setting versus taking care of psych patients in the acute care hospital setting. So when you're working as a nurse in the hospital, which many of you, probably most of you will eventually end up doing, you will work with a lot of patients with psychiatric disorders. And taking care of a patient with psychiatric disorders is a specialty for sure. The patient's in the hospital are also dealing with some kind of physical or surgical issue on top of whatever mental illness they have. If you're working in the inpatient psych setting, these patients have already been medically cleared or they come into that facility without any acute medical problems that need immediate intervention. So at that point, you're essentially able to focus your nursing care on their mental well-being, which to me, was much more enjoyable than trying to juggle that on top of whatever terrible, you know, illness they're suffering from at the same time. So working in the psych facility, I found to be really rewarding, really fascinating, and just a completely different type of nursing that I found to be just really, really interesting. So where we did our psych facilities our psych rotation facility, that sentence made no sense. Um, the psych facility we did, our rotations in had three distinct units within it. There was a pediatric unit because yes, kids do have mental illness and they do need help. There was a general adult unit and there was an intensive care unit. So when I walked into the intensive care unit in the psych facility, I straight up cried. Like I went into this little holding room where they take the patients if they are violent and they have to uh, tackle, not tackle them, but um, I guess it's called a takedown. I don't know if that's a, the um, official word, but that's what they called it when they were describing it to us. When someone is a danger to themselves and to others, they have to do a takedown and then give them an antipsychotic medication to calm them down. So they do it in these little rooms. So I went into one of these little rooms with my friend and cried and she hugged me and told me that it was going to be okay because they had told us so many things about our safety that I was seriously terrified that something awful was going to happen. Um, you know, I had these visions of patients having outbursts, uh, hurting us, throwing us up against the wall. I don't know, whatever. I just had this vision in my mind of what an adult psych intensive care unit would be like. And guess what? None of that actually happened. And I really, really enjoyed my time in that unit. I worked with patients who were in uh, serious bouts of schizophrenia. Mostly, I would say those, that was the most common diagnosis that these patients had at the time that I was there. It was fascinating. It was heartbreaking. It was just incredibly interesting to talk with these people and, and work with them. And then in that general adult unit, a lot of those patients you'll be working with in that setting will be suffering from depression, maybe suicide attempts, lots of bipolar disorder, uh, patients with eating disorders, various personality disorders, you will learn so much in this rotation about therapeutic communication. You'll learn how to set boundaries. You'll get very comfortable creating what are called behavioral contracts, like calling people out on their bad behavior and telling them that it is unacceptable and these are the expectations and you are not going to do X. And if you do X, then these are the consequences. So you'll get really good at creating behavioral 
contracts with patients, you'll get much more comfortable talking openly about things that might have made you um, uncomfortable in the past, like talking openly about suicide, disordered eating, manipulative behavior, any just maladaptive behaviors overall. You'll get very comfortable talking about them in a very frank and open and honest way. And I have to say, you will use these skills a lot in the inpatient setting. And then there was the pediatric unit, which I don't really want to talk about that here. It was just probably the saddest experience I've ever had as a nurse. So if you do work in your clinical rotation in a pediatric mental health setting, I just encourage you to definitely talk through everything that you see and encounter in that setting with your clinical professor so that you can process it in a healthy way and try to just feel like you're doing some good for the for these kids. So then we had our outpatient mental health component. And for this, I don't know, I'm laughing because it was just the weirdest day. We only had to do one day for this particular part. And we went to this group home that was kind of like, I don't know if they call them halfway houses anymore, but it's like a transitional group home for people that were leaving an inpatient facility, but they weren't quite ready to go back out living on their own. So we basically went to this place and it was really cool. They had a pig and they had chickens and it was kind of, well, it was really out in the country, um, a little garden and we just basically hung out with them for the day. I'm sure there were, there was probably like group therapy. I'm sure there was. I don't really remember. I do remember that we went for a walk by a shooting range. <laughs> like I'm not even kidding. The shooting range was right there and we were walking right by it. And I just thought we were going to, I just thought we were going to get shot. I don't know. I just it was really weird. Anyway, so we had the shooting range and then there were some patients that had really bad PTSD and they couldn't go on the walk because the gunfire triggered their PTSD. So those people stayed behind, but the rest of us went out for this walk and it was probably like a good mile walk out in the country and just talking to the residents of the group home. And then later we gave a presentation of some kind. I want to say we gave a presentation on stress relief and self-care tactics. And then we did an activity where we made those little squeezy balls with the balloons and rice or something. And that was our outpatient mental health. And I'm sure there was a paper and, you know, all kinds of assignments that stemmed off of that. But I definitely remember going to that residence and going for a walk at the shooting range. <laughs> okay. And then you'll also have rotations and peds. So when you do your peds class, you're going to have lots of opportunity to hang out with kids. So you might really enjoy this rotation. Our clinical for peds had an inpatient component as well as a component where we spent time at a school working with a school nurse. So for the inpatient component, I spent most of my time, I want to say it was on a pediatric oncology unit, which surprisingly was not nearly as depressing as you would think. What I learned in this rotation was that kids are absolutely amazing and in many ways, a lot easier to deal with than adults. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going <laughs> to pretend that I decided I wanted to be a pediatric nurse. I'm not great with kids. I don't have kids. Um, I feel like kids can see right through me <laughs> and know that I'm uncomfortable around them sometimes. Um, so I just felt like, you know how some people can just be like instantly goofy and happy and silly with kids and the kids immediately love them. I can't always pull that off, especially if I'm really nervous about something like, oh, I don't know, being in nursing school clinicals. So I had a little bit of a hard time, like getting the kids to open up to me, relax around me and let me do things like take a blood pressure. Have you ever tried to take a blood pressure on a two-year-old? It's almost impossible. I'm just going to say, but what I loved about this was that they were just, they're just 
darling, even though they were so sick, they wanted to play. And you knew that if a kid didn't want to go to the playroom, he or she really was really sick. Now, compared to the adults that I work with, I have to almost force them to get out of bed. All the adults want to do is lay around. The kids, all they want to do is get out of bed and go play. So it was just so refreshing to be in that environment and around such positive little energy beings. They were just absolutely just precious. So in your Pete's clinical, you're going to get really good at doing weight-based calculations. Lots of meds given to kids are dosed based on their weight. You will get extremely familiar with Erickson and Freud and all the developmental stages and and the psychology of child development, which is really interesting. And there is a playroom. So who doesn't love a playroom in the hospital? And then for our outpatient, not well, not outpatient, but for the school nurse component that we did, what we did was, uh, I, I think I dreaded this clinical more than any other, but we worked one-on-one with a troubled child in the school setting, which was really interesting, but to be honest, kind of boring. So I went to a school once a week and I, I want to say it was for like six weeks or five weeks. It was just, it was a lot. It felt like a lot. So I went to the school once a week for an hour to interact, I'm doing air quotes, with a student who apparently had been identified as a troubled student. I honestly couldn't tell you now what the issue with the student was. I don't remember it being anything that I thought was a huge deal, but I I think the student put on... Um, she probably wasn't very truthful with me, you know, in hindsight. But um, I do remember that I was absolutely, I was just bored out of my mind. And I have to be honest with you guys because, okay, so an hour of this one-on-one with this student, like 30 minutes, I could have done fine, but an hour was a really long time. And it wasn't like we had set things to do. They gave us some ideas about things that we could do. We could do tutoring, activities, uh, like reading together, stuff to augment what she's learning in class, but also just maybe um, playing games or just doing things where she would talk with me and then I would bring up things like, let's say that I knew she lied to me in our meeting last week. I would want to talk about that with her because I wanted her to work on being truthful and all of this stuff. So anyway, it was a whole hour of this, like, I don't even want to call it a counseling session because I'm not qualified to do that. It was an hour of interaction with this kid. And then I had to go home and write up what they called a process recording. And this was a document that said, here's what she said. Here's what I said. Here's what I felt while I was saying it and what I was thinking at the time. And the best thing that I can say about this exercise was that it gave me a lot of practice in recalling conversations, but it was, it was just, just the whole thing was just really, really dull. Not my favorite. Um, and then we also did a community-based pediatric clinical rotation I don't remember how many weeks I had to do this, but mine was at a county agency where parents who were trying to get their kids back would go for counseling and follow up. So I went with my my classmate and we would do these. We had to give these crazy long presentations. Like I want to say like we had, to, we had to be there for like two or three hour period at a time. So we did these really long presentations to these groups of parents who probably didn't want to be there on things like childhood illnesses, parenting styles, child development, just all these things that could help them learn more about parenting and being good parents and taking good care of their kids. It was just a really grueling <laughs> two or three hour period, very little guidance. We were kind of just left on our own to do what we thought was best. Um, I hope that it helped them though. So that was another part of our pediatric clinicals. And then we also had 
mom and baby clinical. So for many of you, this will be your favorite. For me, it was my least favorite. But um, we did have several, well, only part of it was my least favorite. I actually liked some of it. So for mom, baby, we had labor and delivery postpartum, newborn nursery, and outpatient. So for labor and delivery, I think this was one day in labor and delivery, maybe two. I can't really remember. This is where, you know, you get to uh, see the births. So I got to see a vaginal birth and a cesarean birth. I thought the cesarean birth was way cool because surgery is just fascinating. And just to watch how they do it, holy moly. Um, But overall, OB, definitely not my jam. Way stressful environment. Um, Those nurses that can handle that level of stress have got just, I mean, they're amazing. Absolutely amazing. Not what I was into at all. It just, it terrified me, to be honest. Um, Postpartum, I really kind of liked postpartum, working with the moms and the brand new babies. The moms were just so appreciative and just so happy. Um, No one was sick. Occasionally, a mom would have hemorrhage. But for the most part, these are women that are just had their babies and the babies are adorable. And it was just a positive environment. I could definitely see why people enjoy working in a mom and baby unit. And then we have the newborn nursery. I don't know that the newborn nursery is so much a thing anymore because so many hospitals just have rooming in, but um, the nursery may still be there because the babies would come to the nursery after they had done some skin to skin with mom or dad. The babies would come to the nurseries. They would get a bath. They would get their Billy lights if they needed it. They'd get measurements, all these things. And I thought that was really fun. And the babies were just like these little bundles of just baby. And they just kind of laid there all bundled up. They were very cute. And then we did an outpatient prenatal monitoring clinic. Oh my God. If I thought the process recordings for my school nurse experience were boring, this was even more boring. Only because I was just sitting there observing. I like to do things and going to a clinical where I'm just observing was just the most painful experience of all. Okay. And then we also had community health clinicals. Are you guys seeing why you're so busy in nursing school? There's so much clinical work. So for community health clinicals, I worked with this county agency that provides funding for people who need in-home assistance. So if the person qualifies for in-home assistance, they can get these support services and then the county pays the person who's providing the service. So a lot of that on my end involved doing home visits, determining what these people needed, like, oh, they need a transfer bench so they can get in and out of the tub or they need a walker or they need this or that. And then ordering the medical equipment and the supplies, helping the patients navigate their medical care, verifying prescriptions, like going through people's prescription and and you see they have like four bottles that are all expired (laughs) of the same med, just, you know, helping them understand how to take their medications and just various other things related to home health support. So I had two clients for this rotation. I think it was like a six week period or so. We'd go um, to the county office first thing in the morning and meet with our clinical professor and talk about what our plan was for our, for our clients for that day. And I'd set up appointments to go out to their home. I didn't have to go to their home every week, but um, most weeks I was going out somewhere. So I'd set up an appointment to go see them in their home. We would do a needs assessment, see what they needed, and then um, go back to the office and make all those follow-up phone calls and all of that stuff. So it was really actually very interesting. I, I found that I really enjoy roles where I'm facilitating and making things happen and get things done. So I really enjoyed that part of it. You want to know what the best part of this clinical rotation was? We had 
hours of free time. <laughs> so, because uh, it didn't really take that long to go out to the, you know, client's home, do the meeting. And then um, we'd meet back at the office, you know, by like three or four in the afternoon. And there would be like a couple hours where I was pretty freed up. So my friend and I always went to this fabulous Thai restaurant and had that uh, eggplant with the basil, super spicy, so good. Um, and my other friend would go visit her grandma. So funny. Anyway, at this point, it was fourth semester. I did not feel guilty at all about taking a little me time in my clinicals. I was exhausted and I was so crispy, burnt. I could barely even stand being in school at that time. So yeah, the Thai food really made a difference. So one of the awesome things that I did for my clients was I helped this guy who really had trouble navigating his healthcare. He had some mental health issues, so he's very mistrustful and had just a lot. He had a very complicated health history and he had a lot of mistrust with his doctors and whatnot. So one of the things I did for him was help facilitate him getting a properly fitting prosthetic leg. So I was pretty excited about doing that. I even went to a doctor's appointment with this man so that I would be sure he would show up to see his doctor. Yeah, I did that. Okay, and then we had home health clinicals. Home health, I don't think we did that many hours, maybe two days. We just basically followed a home health nurse for the day and I learned a lot of stuff about going out into the community and visiting people in their homes. Uh, some of the things that she taught me were don't ever use a restroom in a patient's home. Uh, cleanliness is often not a priority for a lot of people. And uh, she also, along the same lines, told us to never take our shoes off. Even if they request it, just tell them that you are not allowed to because your employer forbids it or something because she said some of these floors are just absolutely horrendous. Speaking of personal safety, she said never to let yourself get backed into a corner or up against a wall. Make sure there's always a clear line between you and an exit so you can leave in a hurry if you need to. She told us to obviously never enter a dwelling if you don't feel safe. And then she said the real bonus for her job was that she would see her clients and then go to a coffee shop to do her charting and enjoy a cup of coffee while she worked. So home health clinical, definitely interesting. Didn't get to spend a ton of time there, but it did look like kind of a cool job if you weren't squeamish about going into questionable neighborhoods and domiciles. Um, there could be some other things in there. I remember we went to an assisted living facility to teach residents about flu prevention. I had to go to an AA meeting to learn about addiction and recovery. I went to a support group for caregivers of Alzheimer's patients. There were just so many things that we did. When I look back, I think, holy cow, no wonder I was so busy and so exhausted. So there are maybe even other clinical rotations that my school didn't do that you might experience. I would love to hear about your clinical rotations. So send those in and I'm going to stop this podcast before it gets to 45 minutes. I did not think it was going to take this long, but apparently we do a lot of clinical stuff in nursing school. So thank you guys and welcome back from our little break. I'm so excited that you have chosen to spend your precious free time with me and I hope that we get to do more of it together this year. So we'll see you again, hopefully in about a week for the next episode of the Straight A Nursing Podcast. Thanks guys and be safe out there. This podcast is brought to you by straightanursingstudent.com. Copyright Mo Media.